Just going to do a real quick talk through of the new KTEC ORSS version 2 of their spring conversion kit for the KTM Air Forks. Their kit is a replacement for just the air chamber. So you pull out the air chamber in your air fork, you leave the damping chamber alone, and you just replace the spring, uh, the air spring with a coil spring, and get some of the benefits. I, seems to me, at least from testing, most of the benefits of a spring fork um, without having to mess with the damping or having to do both legs or all these other things. It's a very simple, straightforward way of doing it. Uh, I think it retails for like 525 bucks. The new version does. The old one was, I think, about 30 bucks cheaper. Um, they don't sponsor me, nothing like that. Uh, I paid full price for these. Um, I just happen to really like the way that they work and like them much better than the air fork that I ran previously and tried to get to work for a very long time, both with air chamber changes and running the glide kit and changing valving. Uh, all these things, I never could quite get it to be where I wanted. I have found, even with the correct coil spring, the air spring was so progressive and had such a different characteristic than a, an actual coil spring that the damping has to be a lot stiffer, or at least what I've found is the damping has to be a lot stiffer for everything to work right. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to feel stiffer. I still find the spring conversion to be far more compliant, uh, much more comfortable to ride, much better front end predictability and traction. Uh, but when I did nothing but change from the air spring to the coil spring, it was very, very, very soft. So the old version of their ORSS off-road suspension system, I think, is this one up here. And you can see these are very, very similar. Um, but the difference is there's no, there's no bottoming cone in this. So it's, this is just a spindle um, and a guide rod for your spring. When this bottoms out, it's a hard metal on metal bottom. So the way the air fork bottoming system works is there's only a bottoming cup on the damping leg. And that bottoming cup is in the bottom of the fork uh, in the foot. And it's very, very short travel. It's like maybe maybe an inch of your suspension travel is in that bottoming cone. And it's a very weak bottoming cone. Uh, so what I've found is that when I went to the spring conversion, I could blow right through that bottoming cone, even if I was at the top of the spec, 240 milliliters of oil, uh, the smallest air chamber possible, or, or that WP recommends. Um, it would still blow through on like a, a hard flat landing to where I would feel that, uh, not something that you want to feel through your wrists. So, uh, of course, shortly after I bought that, they came out with this new version. And the new version must have been in response to discovering this issue. Uh, this has a conventional bottoming cone on it. This is more like what you would see in the old KTM uh, WP, the 4860 MXMA uh, open chamber forks. This is what would be on the top of the cartridge. So it's just a, it's got a straight taper or a straight uh, inner diameter for a short distance. And then there's a taper that uh, gets tighter and tighter progressively around this um, bottoming ring, I guess I'll call it. And then there's a, a section that's a, just a tight straight taper around this after that um, taper is, is ended. So um, you have your normal, just purely speed-based damping that comes from the damping leg um, in this range. Uh, there's no damping effect from this. Yes, there's a, seemingly a piston or something in here. It's just for guiding this so that it's not all on this one bushing. Um, it's got big uh, bleed holes in the top and bottom. It's got no real effect. Um, but then you have your position-based damping when you get to the very bottom of travel. So um, roughly that kind of two inches of, of travel or inch and a half of travel, you've got uh, a really nice uh, bottoming cone in here. So pretty straightforward, simple setup, but uh, this should allow me to continue to run the valving that I like while getting a little bit of extra safety for those flat landings where I really don't want to feel that thing go metal to metal. Uh, doesn't feel great on the wrists. So uh, 
pretty big improvement. Um, I saw this and decided I had to buy it since it specifically fixes the problem that I'm having with setting up my shim stacks. So um, pretty good improvement there. Otherwise, uh, everything else about the system, the way it interacts is the same. It's still a drop-in replacement with no uh, machining or anything needed. Um, there's a little plastic spacer ring that goes in the bottom to protect your fork foot from the bottom of the spring. It takes the same springs as before. Uh, the overall length of the old and the new guide is the same, but the length is actually different for this spring spacer. Um, so it's, it's different by shorter by around a quarter of an inch. So that's actually a great thing to me. I always felt like I couldn't back the preload off enough with this system it always had you know 10 12 14 millimeters of preload on it um, i wanted generally a bit less than that i like a stiffer spring with less preload just my personal preference um, and i could never quite get there with this guide so i was really happy when i pulled this out of the box and found that the new one is just a hair shorter enough that i can then uh, use the adjuster to dial in just how much preload I want. Uh, they did also just slightly change the top. I think there's a tool, uh, maybe it's a show or a KYB thing, I'm not sure. I only really deal with WP stuff, um, but that's a little bit different. It makes it a lot easier to put a, a quick bleeder in there because you can actually get the tool to it, unlike the old one, even though I kind of like the way the old one looks a little bit better, uh, but otherwise, functionally, exactly the same. So. That is just the quick differences. Uh, I guess one little other thing to note, I'm not sure if the camera will be able to see it, but there's three little dimples on this. And I don't know exactly what those correspond to, but they're different positions within um, this bottoming cone. So my personal thought is that these are probably drill holes so that if you wanted to fine tune how this bottoming cone feels, if you feel it's too aggressive, you could actually drill a small hole in any of these positions or multiple positions to change where the effectiveness or how effective this bottoming cone is. For me, because I'm a woods guy, I'm going to run generally a little bit softer valving, and then I'm going to rely on the bottoming cone to take the really big hits if I over jump something or do something stupid uh, where you know maybe a motocross guy is going to have stiffer valving and then doesn't necessarily need quite as stiff of a bottoming cone i really don't know um, but that's what that's there for just an extra aspect of potential tunability i think so that's that overall really well made kit and looking forward to testing that out on the 300 xc here um, coming race this weekend Hope this helps if you're shopping around for spring conversions and wondering what that's all about.